Greetings, good life. This is Grandfather. Now, a question has been asked, and several others have asked it over time, so I feel it's important to address it. Several dates have been given for the end of the world, and I must say that certain things have already begun to end. And I think some of you have noticed that. Some of the things you might miss, meaning at times the slower pace of life, friendliness, keeping your doors unlocked, being able to uh, count on your neighbors for all manners of support and assistance. And many of you still have that available. But others wish that it were still so. Okay, there's that. On the other hand, there are wonderful cures, medicines to cure diseases that have gone uncured in the past. There are possibilities for people to work that have not been able to do those jobs before. There is greater consciousness of the needs of all peoples, not just the needs of some. So, not trying to put a political spin on this at all, just trying to say that the predictions of the world coming to an end is uh, just off a little bit. The original predictions that have been translated and edited over the years by well-intentioned people and written in many different books, including religious books, have actually always referred to the end of the world as you know it, not the end of the world, period, as in a sentence. It is the end of the world as you know it. And many things come into play here. You'll notice that with all the videos here on YouTube.com, Benevolent Magic Channel, that they all lead to one basic fact, one goal. And that's empowering you to create the most benevolent life for yourself and others. You may not know this, but when you are living the most benevolent life for yourself, you will be living the most benevolent life for others. If you're unsure in your part of the world what benevolent means, look it up, even though there may not be a word for it exactly in your language. There are interpretations that generally mean good for you and good for others at the same time and has nothing to do with harming others. So, 2012 has been given as a date. Some people believe 2011 is a date for the end of the world. But in fact, the end of the world as you know it simply means that the lack of cooperation, the lack of identifying other human beings to be just as valuable as you are for everyone, regardless of what you perceive they have done, regardless of historical data even about what they've done, and regardless of your feelings and general conditioning that supports blaming others, the end of the world as you know it means that you will look at everyone else as a complete equal and more, not just toleration. You will look at everyone and say, this person has the same portion of soul and spirit that I have. And they are worthy of being respected 
and appreciated. And even though I may not always agree with everything they say or do, we are in this together and we must move forward together. Right now, after 11 11, yeah, meaning after January 11th, 2011, and it will be accentuated further on November 11th, just uh, acknowledging other people's predictions, and accentuated on an ongoing basis by other benevolent energies, spirits, and beings, right now, the end of the world you have known is in progress, but it will be overlapped with something else that's going on right now, and that's this. The world that you have forgotten, all right, the benevolent world, all right, is doing this very carefully. It's nurturing the old ways. It's telling the old ways that it's time to change those old ways. And it's going to do this in time. It's going to tenderize, you might say. It's going to gentle the old world to know that it doesn't have to give up things. That it can just be and let go. And you will all be on the path of the new world. It's very simple. What you have known in the past, the past few thousand years, is a struggle, is a, a challenge. It's an extreme situation, many times. Groups of people struggling for power and influence, and then other groups that follow, struggling for the same power, influence, and ultimately control, and on and on. That is the world that is coming to an end. Does this mean you, yourself, will have no opportunity for happiness, for influence, for anything? Of course not. It means that your needs will be addressed. It means that you will not have to make a big sound. You will not have to do something dramatic to have your needs attended to. Is it going to happen instantaneously? No. But you will notice this year, next year, and in the years to follow, increasing at an increasing rate, an opening, you might say, for you to be appreciated, acknowledged, and yes, loved. So, many of you have not written down your needs. If you haven't written them down, write them down now and be aware that your needs change over time. So keep your list up to date. Sometimes your needs are wants, and that's understood. I would like to have a new car. I would like to have a new suit, and so on. But sometimes you are crystal clear. You might need respect, appreciation, honoring, love, support, food, shelter, and so on. Companionship. Like that. You need to be able to choose your friends who have similar likes or dislikes. You have needs that are genuine. The end of the world is the end of the world as you have known it. Everybody on this planet has known the world to be something, and it is very hard to let go of what you have known, even if it is uncomfortable, even if it creates cynicism at times because it's uncomfortable, meaning that you can't expect something to occur that you'd like, and you can be sure of that, so in a way that becomes comfortable, and then it becomes cynical. Please try and cast off 
the energy of cynicism. It does hold you back. And there are those who do not realize that they are encouraging cynicism, which holds people back. Try to be alert to that. Am I suggesting you become Pollyanna to bring up the name of the famous character? I am not suggesting that at all. I am suggesting that you do something that is infinitely easier than stopping. Starting is so much easier. Start to believe that the world is getting better. Practice, even though it might seem silly to some of you. Practice every day for one minute, build up to two minutes, and then build up to three minutes. Practice being optimistic. Practice believing that good things can happen. Practice believing that good things can happen for you. Say it out loud. Say, good things can happen. Not good things can happen, good things can happen to me. Say, good things can happen. Good things can happen for me. Good things can happen for my friends. Good things can happen for my family. Good things can happen for my people. Say it slower. Practice on this. Remember that this is optimism exercise, and it may not entirely close the door to cynicism, but it will begin to open the door to optimism and work towards balance. The end of the world is the end of the world you have known. That means, ultimately, the end of cynicism, the end of racism, the end of prejudice, the end of violence, the end of misunderstanding, the end of hate. The new world is about awareness of the value of all peoples, you and everyone else. Practice your optimism. It will be of use. The world is not coming to an end. Everybody will not die. Of course, you will in your own time. But the old ways are dying. And do I mean that politeness, friendliness, and safety are dying? No. I mean that once you understand that everybody is just as good as you, that have the same soul energy you have, that are imbibed with the same spirit energy you have, that are a portion of Creator just like you, then many things that are benevolent, that are good, will be present once again. And you won't have to share them with just your friends, just your family, just your loved ones. People will say hello on the street in a friendly way. People who are neighbors who are riding by or driving by, will wave and smile. And people you don't know and have never met will appreciate you and value you. That is the world that is coming. Let the old ways of violence, hatred, and mistrust go. And I know that's hard to do, especially because you've been conditioned in that way, and you may have experiences that prove it. But start practicing your optimism, and consider it to be, as some might in acting workshops, a portrayal that needs to convince others that it's so. So pretend you're practicing for the school play, or even for Broadway, or for the theater, or for movies. When you say it, that good things can happen, good things can happen for me, and so on, like that. Say it in a way that is only good for all beings. Good things can happen for everybody, like that. 
and say it in a way that convinces others who hear it. You can practice it in groups, you can practice it alone. You can whisper it, you can say it out loud. But you'll have to do more than think it, because it needs to be made physical and you need to begin. Remember, the end of the world isn't about endings, it's about beginnings. So, you don't get off easily, meaning you can't just wait for the world to come to an end and start over again with Creator's blessings. It's not like that. You have to work at it this time. You have to make an effort to be benevolent, and it will pay off. And in the process, you will feel empowered. I will continue to teach you things here and uh, help to bring about your empowered, benevolent state of being. Good life to you all, and good night.